Welcome to IBTV's newest MMA show, Takedown. I am Evan Herzog. It's my friend Albert Rosales, and uh, we're here to talk about the week and the upcoming months um, events on the major playing field of MMA. And what better way to start than to start the day after UFC 220? We had a couple title fights on the platform. Uh, Stipe Miocic, Francis Ngannou for the heavyweight title, and Daniel Cormier and Volkan Ozdemir fought for the light heavyweight title. First of all, what did you think of the card overall? And uh, I guess we can kind of start with DC versus Volkan and uh, your your thoughts on that that fight overall. I thought the card overall was really uh, was put together really well. There were some good matchups, there were some good knockouts. Uh, the DC fight. Um, uh, I was pulling. I'm a big DC fan, so I was already pulling for him as it was. But I really just saw this. Um, really, the only way Ozdemir was gonna win the fight was by knockout. You know, I Early feel like too, uh, right? right. If the, the longer it goes, and you know, the better the chances for DC. Um, DC is a, a more well-rounded fighter. And let's be honest, if it weren't for John Jones, I, I, I truly, in my heart, believe DC would be probably one of the greatest light heavyweights ever. You know, I mean, if you look at his losses, even as far as going to heavyweights. And beyond, you know, like he's fought everybody. So, and Jones is the only man that's been able to better him, but only one loss right. on DC's, uh, you know, his his resume there. Um, how important do you think it was for DC to get the finish? You know, coming off of the big loss in July that is now considered a no contest to John Jones. Um, and kind of gifting the belt back to him, he talked about how he he felt like he wasn't defending the belt and that he was fighting for a vacant belt. How important do you think it was for him to uh, to get the finish and not just grind out a five round win against Vulcan? You know, I I think as far as the general public is concerned, I think uh, maybe not as much as emphasis as what DC was putting on it. Like I think the win itself would have been would have been great. I mean. He's kind of turned off a lot of people anyways, and I don't know why. Like, personally, I really like him, but... Uh, Me too. Um, you know, but he put a lot of pressure on himself for this fight, you know, and that and that's one thing that people don't give enough credit for. He's very graceful in defeat. He's very humble when he wins. Um, so for him to come out here and say that he just, you know, felt like it was a vacant belt and he didn't deserve it, like he had to come out and win it, you know, I feel like that's a lot of unnecessary pressure uh, that he put on himself. You Don't know? you think that kind of that kind of is the epitome of DC? That's why he's an Olympian, you know, and right. that's and that's why he he only has one person on this planet that can better him. Um, so I I kind of agree that he probably put too much pressure on that aspect. But watching DC through the years, I think that's just kind of who he is. If if he didn't have that pressure he wouldn't be as great as he is. Because I do agree with you. If, if John Jones doesn't exist, I don't know if we're talking about just the greatest light heavyweight, but maybe the greatest MMA fighter up to this point. Now we're only, you know, UFC celebrating 25 years this year, but up to this point, I would it would be hard to, to say anybody's been better than him other than John Jones. But, you know, what I guess... What do you see next for Cormier? Do you see a rematch with Gustafsson? He's he's beat a lot of people in the top ten already. I I don't, I don't think he's cleaned out the division. I think Gustafsson's no. always a threat. Um, and I you know I definitely don't think he's cleaned out the division. You know like like Jones had it you know a few years ago or whatever. But uh, or even GSP at you know at one seventy, um, I still feel like there's good matchups for him. But I don't feel like the money's there. You know what I'm saying? Like you can throw Gustafson out there with DC, and it, and to me, there's not going to be a lot of a, a lot of buzz about that fight. To me, the only thing that makes sense is let him go up to heavyweight. Let him fight Stipe. You know, let him go up there and fight. You know, and uh, as far as Stipe is concerned, you know, like who's the next challenger for him? Maybe Kane. I see Kane's training again. And that would probably stop DC from making the jump up. That's Correct. the reason why DC let left the heavyweight division in the first place. Other than kind of being an undersized heavyweight, although he was ragdolling heavyweights left and right, he, you know, very close relationship with Kane, didn't want that kind of drama within the gym. But if Kane can't come back, I think, you know, I I agree. If, jo if they can't make another Jones fight, which who knows with 
you know, he's taking polygraph tests, right. etc. Who who knows with all of that? But if he can't, maybe he does jump up um, to heavyweight. Dana White kind of talked about it. We'll see. We'll see if Stipe even wants that. We'll see if Stipe thinks he can gain from that, or if he wants to wait for Kane. Because let's let's kind of move into that. There was a lot of talk, more so about why Ngannou lost and about how great Kane Velasquez was last night. I don't know if you noticed that. All the while we were watching Stipe Miocic become the most decorated heavyweight in UFC history. What did you think of his performance against Ngannou? Francis was rightfully hyped going into this fight. He had touched everybody that he had fought in the UFC and pretty much put most all of them to sleep. But he wasn't able to do that last night. Um, what do you think of Stipe's performance? Well, you know what? Uh, Stipe comes from a very good camp. Uh, that strong style team out in Independence. Uh, they're a very good team. I lived in Ohio for a little bit. I'm a big fan of uh, Marcus Marinelli, his coach, the way he does things. Uh, so I knew Stipe was going to come prepared. And even before the fight, I was uh, I was talking to Shannon and some of the people we were hanging out with watching the fights. And I was telling them, listen, if he's smart, he's going to lay on it in God. He's going to lay on him. He's going to press him on the cage. He's going to lay on him, survive the first two, three rounds. And with all that muscle, like you're going to see him fade. You're going to see him start to fade. Uh, and then that's your chance. He's most dangerous in the first two rounds, you know, because of that power. It's a great equalizer. You know, we saw it even in the third round, uh, third or fourth round. Third round, he, he was completely with gassed hand. out. Right. And he's still got that kind of power where you can hurt somebody like Stipe Miocic. Um, but then, you know... Stipe's a smart guy, you know, he's a smart guy, and Ngannou said himself that he gasped, that he punched himself out after uh, the first two rounds. He also said he learned more in this fight than he has in the entire four years he's been doing MMA. So that's something else we need to take a look at is, he's only been doing MMA for four years. It's crazy. This guy was homeless, and in that amount of time has built himself up to be in a world title fight. I mean, it's amazing. His whole story is amazing, so I understand why the UFC was pushing him so hard. And, to be honest, everybody likes a knockout. Everybody likes to see somebody face down on the canvas. Right. You know, so it's easy to push him, but... And I think there was a little bit, you know, Stipe had finished five straight fights, too. It wasn't being talked about as much because sometimes his his knockouts are more TKO-style, ground right. and pound, as where we've seen Francis lift people into orbit. You know, most recently with Alistair Overeem. But I... And I agree, the story is incredible with Francis. And I thought the UFC, we kind of said we want to talk a little bit about this, is the UFC wasn't able to kind of put both their stories on a platform. It seemed like they, they chose the one that they wanted to run with because Stipe has a great story too. He's the everyday guy, blue-collar guy. He's a fire fighter in Ohio. He <laughs> worked his last shift exactly one week before this title fight, why don't you think, why is it that they don't push him more? And in your mind, where after this win, you know, becoming the most decorated heavyweight of all time, where does this put Stipe um, on your all-time list? Because I know kind of where it puts mine, puts him on mine, um, which would be top three for sure, for me. Just on his body of work and what he's done uh, what he's been able to accomplish, and just his fight IQ. He's, like you said, he, that was what he had to do. Although, I, I do want to say, I think some of his stand-up last night's being overlooked a little bit. Right. He touched Ngannou up, too, on the feet. But where does where does this put Stipe on your all-time list right now? You know, honestly, like, I, I was thinking about this last night because they started talking about three uh, consecutive defenses, and it hasn't been done before. So I was really trying to think about who was better. Um... And honestly, if you look back at it, even if you go back a few years or, you know, go back 10 years, in terms of being an all-around fighter, I don't see a lot of heavyweights that are better than him. To me, the only one that really strikes out is Cain Velasquez. And that's... Cain's well-rounded. He's got great stand-up. He's got great wrestling. He's got great cardio. He's good on the ground. Um, so to me, it was Cain. The only problem with Cain is he can't seem to stay healthy. And I feel like if he could have stayed healthy, then we'd be talking about him you know, of being course. in this position. Um, so to me, really the only one, you know, if it, you know, if you want to have your dream matchups or whatever and you put Stipe out there, like, I would take Stipe over Randy Couture, you know, and Randy's going down as one of the greatest of all time. You take some of these heavyweights, I feel like he's better than Frank Mir, some of these guys. So, you know, it's, it's really interesting how you can put that together. Awesome. 
Well, that's going to do it for our first segment here, IB, IBTV, sorry, .us. You can find us there or on Roku at uh, Inside Boxing TV. So we appreciate you. Once again, I'm Evan Herzog, Albert Rosales, and this is IBTV.